I'd probably like to give you an example of what my experience was uh, teaching primary school children. Well, firstly, the primary school ages were from six years old till 12, 13, right? So um, I, I learned a lot from this particular age group, especially the young, the six year, seven year olds. I learned from them their sense of freedom and that art was, art had um, an intrinsic feeling of enjoyment for them, all right? Which made me very jealous, you know? And if I looked at why I was jealous, I'd have to consider what has made me so different from when one is six years old, seven years old, eight years old. And this is the problem that I had later on with the 12 year olds and 13 year olds, the higher age groups in the primary school. They were beginning to have a sense of who they were in the world. And they had the sense of comparing themselves to others. And I think this was the biggest fault for me when it came to like producing interesting artwork because I would, for example, have had a child from when he or she was six years old till when they were 13, 12, 13. So I would have had them throughout that particular age, uh, that era. Um, and I could see how children changed in personality from this free uh, um, six-year-old, seven-year-old to being like a clammed up, um, insecure 12, 13-year-old who was very much aware of what was right and wrong in their particular eyes because they had a sense of what others were doing and they would have a sense of comparing where they are in relation to that. So this sense of right and wrong for me is always the most interesting aspect. So I would say that the greatest thing that one should not do is not compare yourself to, to, to other people or to others. To have a sense of your uniqueness, your own individuality, um, because this is another thing that art, I believe, um, art uh, develops is a sense of, of individuality, you know. Um, you're able to stand alone in the world because you've created something that cannot be repeated by anybody else. So I would say that um, that was the most important thing for me, to, to tell somebody who wasn't confident to not compare themselves firstly to what they believe is right or wrong. And then secondly, to have a deeper understanding of what creativity is in even the normal person's life. Even a person who is not an artist, I believe is an artist in some sort of way. Um, I remember I used, to be, I used to tell these kinds of children who had these kinds of problems in the upper classes um, at school was that Everybody's an artist. So, for example, if you get up in the morning and you get dressed, you would be making certain decisions about how you look. You'd be making certain decisions about what to put on, you know, um, what clothing you're going to wear now. Does this fit with that? Um, does this color go with that color, you know? I even used to tell people like, um, even when they, in the bathroom and they look in the mirror, you know, what are you looking at? You are, you, you are looking at yourself and you are deciding whether you are presentable to the outside world, you know, in a very simplistic sense now. And if you comb your hair in a certain direction, what you are basically doing is you, you having a sense of design and you are applying an artistic principle to something that's very ordinary in your life. So this, this, that word design has always been important for me when, when it came to teaching uh, children or making children aware of certain things. They would have an, a, a kind of a unconscious sense of design and yet they wouldn't be understanding that 
design is a very, very intrinsic artistic uh, activity principle um, that you apply, you know. I understand that very well because I think I, in my life, I have been through stages where I've used those kinds of things as excuses um, to excuse my laziness. In the, in the contemporary world now, we're very conscious of the environment, ecology, recycling, reusing of things. Um, and it wasn't always, the world wasn't always like that. So I remember way back when, I would say, in the beginning when these things were starting to become the consciousness of the world, um, we were already beginning to deal with this in the art world, I remember, you know, because um, there were times where art lessons were built around not having anything, you know. So you would set this challenge for children, you know. If you want to paint now, but you don't have a brush, what are you going to do, you know. And we came up with solutions. I remember this one classic, I wish we were living in the digital age way back then when this was happened because I would have made a document about this, a documentary series of photos, how this one particular child actually took twigs that were lying outside and found um, scrap material that was in the environment um, and actually created a device for painting, which was a, a, a stick and a, a piece of foam from, I don't know, from maybe a cushion or something like that, but a piece of scrap foam. And I remember that um, she also used dry grass to tie the two together. And that for me was like a perfect example of the kind of recycling world that we have now, that we were entering back then. Recycled material has become one of the in things in the art world nowadays. I've been overseas. There are actually a thriving industry in the European countries where they actually develop um, recycled materials specifically for artists. There are shops that actually, you know, uh, only uh, operate with recycled materials for artists. So. So I don't believe that this can be used as an excuse. Uh, I think when human beings have this sort of intrinsic uh, need to make excuses when you can't, you know, um, do things the way you actually dream it to be. But there again, this instinct of knowing what is right and what is wrong has to do with this part of it, you know, because why would you not be expressive if you simply don't have a brush or don't have some glue or something like that, you know, in order to actually do something? You wouldn't, you wouldn't, nothing would excuse you if you were really passionate.